This podcast is brought to you by Deepbridge Capital LLP. Deepbridge is authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Please note that investments discussed are both illiquid and high risk and won't be suitable for all investors and should be considered as part of a diversified portfolio. The content of this podcast should not be construed as financial or taxation advice. We recommend investors seek appropriate professional financial advice. Any views expressed may no longer be current and may have already been acted upon. So welcome to this Deep Bridge Discovery podcast. My name is Simon Tutton. Uh, the aim of these podcasts, uh, for those who haven't listened before and maybe for those who haven't have, are still confused, um, is to bring investments to life. Uh, venture capital is a mysterious world full of wizards and um, complicated things. Um, and it's also to give you an insight into what we do at Deep Bridge Capital. So in this episode, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Ben Cooper, entrepreneur, angel, um, and funding lead of Tech Southwest, which um, aims to support tech companies across Southwest England and, and build a bit of a cluster. Um, so I'm going to go slightly off piste and off script and just say, Ben, can you give us a, a little bit about you and your background and, and where you've come from? Yeah, sure. Uh, I anticipated that question, I'm glad to say. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so... Hi, uh, Simon, and, and um, you know, hello, everyone who's listening in. Um, my name's Ben Cooper. Uh, did sort of 25 years in financial services, everything from um, starting my own fund management company to working for AXA Wealth, so, and, and, you know, a few bits in between. Um, up until, so between 2011 and 2018, I was um, uh, working in a, a, a local uh, or Part of a management buy-in, I guess, to a to, to a local um, discretionary fund management company or local to me in Bristol, um, which we then subsequently sold to a to, to a major uh, FTSE 100 wealth company. You may be able to decide, determine who that was. Um, I left there in 2018, and since then I've been working with um, scale-up and startup companies um, around investor readiness and strategy, etc. Um, one of my other hats is that I'm an active angel investor, so uh, angel investor for Bristol Private Equity Club, uh, where myself and three others are also focused on um, sort of seed end, so SEIS and early stage pre-revenue companies and fundraising for them. Uh, also a member of Mainstream Angel Group, which is uh, uh, Mitchell Moore's uh, legal firm, uh, down in Exeter, or uh, I think they've got branches in Bristol and London as well, but um, that's where that's based. And uh, recently joined Dorset Business Angels as well. So, um, and as you said, um, in the last 18 months, I've become increasingly involved with an organisation called Tech Southwest, um, which is taking over more and more of my life, but, um, but it's extremely interesting. Yeah, well, thank you very much for that. That uh, brings you to life a little bit. Um, so with your Tech Southwest hat on, can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about Tech Southwest and why it exists and what it's doing? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Tech Southwest um, was started by a chap called uh, Dan Pritchard um, probably about five years ago now. And um, he's the MD of Astley Media, which is a sort of digital marketing and PR agency based in Exeter. And he did it to begin with, to sort of bring a brand, I think, or his intention was to kind of bring a brand to the Southwest sort of tech community. And um, what became, I think, apparent to him quite quickly was that it wasn't about that. What it was about um, was about connectivity uh, and the community together, the whole Southwest together. So the Southwest is an interesting area because it's got a big kind of capital, I suppose, in Bristol, uh, in the north of the region. Um, and then it kind of stretches down and a bit to the right, um, but has this strange wiggly bit called Cornwall down on the end. Um, and they're all very different and have a very strong identity and very, each of the regions have a very strong identity. And, and, and at the time, I think there's probably an aspect of where people were just, you know, these regions were very insular and wouldn't talk to one another. Um, certainly, that's, you know, a lot of the investment communities and, and tech communities in particular. And so uh, Dan spent a lot of that sort of first few years just bringing everyone together and, and, and getting them to talk to one another and start sharing experiences, best practice and things like that. Mm. And um, COVID actually kind of changed things or accelerated things where suddenly geographical barriers no longer existed where, because everyone was at home and everyone was on Zoom. 
uh, doing podcasts and doing uh, Zoom uh, meetings and, uh, you know, uh, Teams or whatever is your flavour. Um, but um, it suddenly got everyone talking um, across the region with, with less of that sort of um, feeling that I'm in Cornwall, I don't talk to Bristol. And it became more of a sort of a southwest thing and people starting to communicate and wanting to talk to one another. So, so you know, of all the terrible things that, that COVID brought on the positive side for us was um, breaking down of barriers, I think, from a geography point of view yeah. um, in the southwest. And so I got involved about 18 months ago, stumbled across uh, uh, Dan, made a couple of connections and then realised that he was running this sort of Tech Southwest operation. I got talking to him and then I sudden, uh, the first things I kind of drove with him was, you know, what's Tech Southwest about? You know, so I spoke, spoke to him about what's, what's the strategy going forward and what's, you know, how, how's Tech Southwest going to evolve in this, in this, in this period where um, people are up for collaboration, things like that. So we, we talked about strategy and um, broke it down into, you know, what, what does the community need? And we kind of focus now on three specific areas, which is business support, uh, talent and funding, which probably covers a lot of ground and covers a lot of, a lot of subjects. Mm. Um, but is the, three probably key things, talent being the top, funding second, I'd say support third, as the as the main issues that companies in the Southwest are finding, or certainly tech companies in the Southwest are finding around um, growing their businesses, starting businesses, growing their businesses, getting funding for their business, getting resource for their business, all those, those types of things. So we started to think, well, okay, so there's lots of stuff going on in the Southwest. How do we signpost what's going on, but also how do we help? And so one of the gaps was we identified was early stage um, investor readiness uh, or acceleration, and so we so we just went ahead and launched a um, an online incubator. Everyone was stuck at home, um, so we did a work with a partner called Activate, um, who um, specialist in sort of online. We're, we're, you know, pre-COVID, we're running online programs, so they, they seem like a perfect fit for us. And so we we, we started our startup studio, which was truly cross regional. We had companies from Cornwall to Gloucester to you know across to Wiltshire and all over the place and everywhere in between. And um, as a cohort, we ran a couple of those. We had sort of 20 companies go through that in total or across a couple of cohorts. And, and, and it was a quite intense six week program. And then with a kind of pitching event at the end and um, pleased to say, uh, I think it's, it's up to 30% of them now have either raised capital or raising capital at the moment. One of them has already been acquired. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, it's been, it's, it's, it's been a great experience. Coming into this year, um, one of the things we did to kind of move up a gear was, uh, well, I suppose last year we commissioned a report by Widecap Consulting to, uh, supported by Deloitte, um, NatWest, um, Exeter University, Astley Media, um, a few other partners to uh, report about the Southwest, really kind of a state of the nation. Mm. Where are we um, in comparison to the rest of the UK, but also what are the challenges, et cetera, in the, mm. in, in the Southwest. And, uh, and one of the key things that came out of that was uh, was a load of actions, <laughs> which is uh, <laughs> which is great is. for a, for an organisation with kind of uh, four people in it. And uh, so we uh, um, the key you know the the, the key findings um, were there were issues again. There's no real surprises at high level. It's around talent um, and, and funding and, uh, and connectivity and networking and um, and support. And but at the granular level. Uh, there was a lot of detail information about what the um, you know, what the opportunity was in the southwest. You know what was its potential, and it was huge. Um, but there are some key barriers, and then predominantly around funding and talent, um, and how we can fill those gaps, create those, create the peoples for the roles that are going to be created, the hundred and fifty thousand roles that we need over the next sort of three to five years yeah. in tech. And how we how do we create those? Um, how do we close the gap between further education and, and employment? And, and also, how do we in, encourage the investment into the region that uh, um, needed to fund that, you know, fund, fund these companies that, you know, uh, things like that. So, uh, yeah, it's been, um, you know, that's what we do. So, so ultimately, yeah, what we do is we work with um, all the tech clusters across the Southwest, everything Software Cornwall, uh, Digital uh, Plymouth, uh, tech Exeter, Digital Somerset, Tech Spark, you know, all the all the all the clusters across the Southwest. We're kind of, I guess, an umbrella organization, I suppose, over, overarches those, bring those together, like I said, 
in the beginning, it was all about connectivity. And we've got a really good community uh, now across those clusters. And we all work together, share best of practice, but also we're all looking to roll out these um, uh, actions, et cetera, uh, so we can help the community across the region you know, meet, its, meet its potential, which is huge. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I mean, I'm based in Bristol, and I definitely had a sense that even Bristol, with the critical mass that it has, doesn't necessarily have the critical mass to go it alone. Uh, but actually, yeah. as, a, as a region, um, I think Tech Southwest is doing a, a great job of being the right organisation at the right time to mm. help bring people together and with Falmouth Launchpad and all the great stuff that's going on in Exeter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely a, a, a good organisation, um, and well needed. Um, so with your entrepreneur's hat on... Um, mm. Why would you say, and, and referencing back to what you were saying about the, the state of the nation in comparison to, to other mm. regions, potentially, why is the Southwest such a great place um, to start a company? Well, I think um, you just, just look at the just look at the coastline. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's, you know, so it's a nice place, uh, to live. and you can't you know you can't dismiss it. I mean, it, it, in, in the fact that the, mm. the Southwest is a beautiful place to live. Um, and it's a beautiful place to operate out of. There's so much going on, um, you know, from a, a, you know a cultural point of view, um, but also a, a, an outdoorsy type of view. There's, you know, is it the longest coastline for a region in the in the UK? And it's just, you know, it's uh, uh, there's so much going on, and it's so beautiful. And um, you know, it's one of its strengths, but also you know the, the whole sort of geographic spread is also part of it, you know one of its weaknesses as well. So. Um, yeah, you can't dismiss the fact that it's a beautiful place to live. So why not start a company here? And 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 the key thing as well as around you know as point I was making earlier around COVID was that how that broke geographical uh, barriers down. As long as you've got decent internet, mm. um, you know you can really you know in a lot of cases, particularly with tech companies, um, certainly on the software side of things, you know hardware may be slightly different, but you can certainly operate from pretty much anywhere. Mm. Um, and so, you know, that's that, that that's a key aspect to it. Yeah. So, what, what's you know, but 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 apart from it being a beautiful place, um, things that are attractive to the area is um, we've got some major universities. You know, you've got uh, University of Bristol, University of Bath, um, University of West of England. You've got uh, Exeter University, Plymouth University, Falmouth University. We've got some real solid companies and some big and some big universities you know in, in in the southwest region and so from an academic point of view um there's a lot of research going on and there's a lot of facilities um within the southwest um and also the, the, the because of the um urban areas but also the the, the green areas and the, and the agricultural areas we, we we cover a huge range of different types of tech mm. so bristol fintech life sciences uh, robotics, you know, hardware, uh, aerospace, you know, there, there's so many different techs and that's just in Bristol. And then you look down the regions and there's agri-tech, there's marine tech, you know, all across, obviously we've got such a huge coastline. Um, we've got Freeport in Plymouth come in and, um, you know, huge amounts of redevelopment. Cornwall's benefited hugely from European funding and, and, and will increasingly do so from the UK government. There's a levelling up agenda going on. So investment is coming into the community. Uh, coming into the ecosystem and um, you know so if you start a company with any type of tech pretty much you know there, there's something going on somewhere there's a hub of it uh, somewhere across the southwest and you can find uh, support um, around it and it's in a lot of the cases it's just about signposting con and connectivity yeah and so yeah. how do we how do we link a uh, you know, a hardware company in, um, you know, I don't know, in Tall Bay to a company, you know, to, to University of West of England's Hardware Lab, for example. So, you know, it, it's it's all there. Um, all the support's there. There is funding available and increasingly so. And we're doing a lot of work in that region as, in that aspect as well, around angel group development and, yeah. uh, and fund and development. Been... You know, one of the reasons, you know, and I, you know, I've talked to you, Simon, and, you know, I'm very happy to be here today. But part of my agenda is to increase the expo, you know, increase, showcase the Southwest to, to fund groups like, like yourself. And, uh, you know, I want to in, attract as much inward investment into the Southwest as well. And also one of the key factors for us is to stop investment leaving the Southwest. So, um, and highlight the, the opportunities for people, investors, et cetera, in the Southwest mm. 
uh, rather than sending their money to the London and the Southeast to invest in companies there, there are, there are hugely interesting and innovative companies in the Southwest um, that need their money uh, and, and have huge potential. So, so I think, I think in summary, everything's here. You know, we've got all the, we've got the support, the academic support. We've got the uh, uh, you know regional support. We've got the support from the councils. We've got support from the LEPs and the combined authorities. Um, you know, if you need you know if you need somewhere to base yourself, then you'll find a spot in the southwest, which mm. will which will be right for your business and, will, and, and 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 enable you to to grow. Yeah, and the, and the, uh, you know building on that, the region is full of talent from its industrial clusters and the universities. And absolutely, and I think we've seen quite a lot of um, London-based firms either moving out entirely of London or basing yeah. their, their, their dev operations in the southwest. Yeah, um, because well, of that desirability and the, that existing kind of human capital. No, it's true because it's, it's funny. I was in London last week and uh, on a boat trip uh, down the Thames, as you do. But one of the key, one of the interesting things that the chap uh, telling us all about the sites that we were seeing as going down the southwest was, um, you know, this company used to be in that building. This company used to be in that building. They've moved out. They've moved out. They've moved out. And that's because they, you know, they, they they don't need to be in London now, and they don't, you know, they don't necessarily want to be in London, and they want to move to other areas. Where perhaps the, the 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 you know for for some people this the, the type of type of lifestyle and things like that is more uh, more attractive, um, you know. And so you know, and as I said, with COVID, it has accelerated a lot of that process. It's accelerated a lot of things, um, but one of the one of those things is uh, is the movement of uh, movement of people uh, to other areas of the country away from maybe um, centres of urbanisation. Mm. Okay, so um, I'm going to pick on one specific uh, aspect of the your partners that you're working with, um, mm. focusing on angels and, and sure, work yeah. that's been going on there, and and how important angels are to an ecosystem. And um, yeah, and no, they are they they're, they're super important um, because they're not only a source of funding, but they're a source of advice and talent and. One of the key factors that we found around the sort of talent crisis in this, and I will come back to sort of angels and funding, but 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 one of the key things is we found is not only do we need lots of uh, young people coming out of universities that can develop and, and you know software developers and things like that, and you know fresh kids with full of enthusiasm and learning and, and fresh stuff. What they also need, and we're finding a lot of companies, is a bit of grey hair actually, yeah. and they need a bit of um, you know they bit of bit, bit of people who've been around the block. Um, and not necessarily as technically uh, skilled as the people that these these founders are in these particular areas, but they know how to run a business and they know how to get stuff done. Um, because you know a lot of founders come across are very young, uh, often spin outs from, acad from acad academia, um, and so they need support. And so angel groups not only provide the funding or some of the funding that they need, uh, certainly early stage funding. Um, there are they're a keen source of that, um, but also then can provide a bit of a wise head or, uh, you know, a, a, you know, some information or, or and it can be often. You know, so, so for example, like I said at the start, I'm, I'm a member of three angel groups. And, and, and one thing that's common across that is that you have people from all walks of life, uh, all different industries. Um, and so it's often that, you know, if you're pitching to an, an angel group to raise some money, there's probably someone in the room or more than one who actually have operated in your industry before. You may be disrupting that industry with your new tech or your, you know, your disruptive idea or innovation, um, but they've been in that industry and they know it um, and they may well understand what you're trying to do. And so they can provide a lot of valuable experience and, and, and knowledge and wisdom uh, as well as you know um a few quid to, uh, to 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 get you going so uh on that basis yeah the angel angel community and i think it's probably the same in every in every region in every community in every walk of life but the, the, you know the angel groups are essential the problem we've got in the southwest is there aren't enough of them so what um, would you do to encourage more people to come forward Fourth as well, angels. it's interesting. So we've got a pre so one of the actions <coughs> in the report I was uh, referencing, the Southwest uh, Tech Analysis Report that we launched uh, in January, February this year. Uh, one of the actions coming out of that was to develop the angel community. So Bristol Private Equity Clubs, probably about 100 members. Uh, mainstream, going to say probably 40, 50, and probably similar for Dorset Business Angels. You know, 200, say, mm. angels across the Southwest. Now, I know there's more than that. 
Um, they're not necessarily as part of those groups, but there has to be a lot more than that mm. uh, in the Southwest. And so what we're doing, so part of the program, I'm talking to um, the banks, a lot of private banks, um, obviously have high net worth clients um, across the UK, but a lot of them have uh, high net worth clients in the, in the Southwest and also talking to legal groups and accountants and stuff, all about their high net, high net worths um, in the Southwest mm. about educating their uh, client bases. So we're running some programs, um, uh, information, you know, uh, just finalizing them now, but there's a program that we're going to be running um, throughout sort of from July onwards um, across the Southwest, where we're going to run events around matching not only um, the mentorship side of things and the talent side of things to, 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 to companies looking for support in that aspect, but also, of course, naturally, um, there's going to be angel investment opportunities. So it's about encouraging them and educating them about what an angel is, uh, why we do it, uh, why it's fun, actually, um, and interesting, but also potential for big returns and investment. And of course, you know, as as you guys will know from your, your own SDIS and EIS funds and things like that, there's, there, there's actually, you know, really attractive tax benefits as well. So, yes. you know, for, for these for these types of individuals, there's quite a lot of pluses. They probably just don't know about it, might have heard about it, don't know where to go because there's no local community. So we're doing a lot of work around educating these types of high net worths into the community, educating them about angel investment, about what it means, and also then hopefully triggering the, the development of small groups because a lot of it's around community. Um, people want to do things together. They don't necessarily want to invest us on their own. And so, you know, what we found with the clubs that I'm, uh, and groups that I'm members of is that, there's always a really good chat about stuff afterwards. After after they've done their pitch and left, and we talk about them behind their backs, it's uh, you know there's some real good conversations and people uh, are encouraged by one another. If you know people, you know, and particularly when there's like I said, there's usually one or two people in the room who have got experience of that industry. Um, and, you know, and if they you know you listen to them and they say you know do you know what this is a great idea and uh, you know this could really work you know then that that helps. That's really helpful to, rather than just trying to do it on your own. And so it's it, it, so it's educating the community, which then creates the interest, and then it's building those little pockets of angels that we can support through um, paperwork and legalities and, and all those sorts of things. And we're we're, putting to, we're working with the UK Business Angel Association around how we can provide a package of support to to do that as well. Cool. So um, obviously, angels help entrepreneurs with both their experience and their funding, mm -hmm. um, and. We're, we're saying that the, the Southwest is an exciting place to invest. Um, loads of good companies. Can you give us an example or two of some, on, some of the entrepreneurs that are out there that are really, um, you're finding really exciting at the moment? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so I'm, I, I work with, with, with a few companies and there's, you know, in all types of scale. Um, I'm working with an actuator company at the moment called Brown Waves, which is, uh, uh, about, about, about haptics. Um, it's interesting. Our kind of beachhead market is uh, is the sneaker market, so it's kind of haptic trainers, which then fits into the whole um, metaverse and gaming and, and, and music and general um, feel of, uh, of things. The feet are really sensitive. Uh, there are there are anchor points to the to, to the earth, and so um, you know you get a lot of you get a lot of feedback and a lot of satisfaction and, and feeling through your feet around uh, brown haptics. That's our kind of beachhead market, and that's something that's trending. Obviously, the, the metaverse and uh, you know, and haptics, etc., is a real trending industry. But but the key is in the in, in the actuators that create the vibration, um, and that's where the, that's really where the technology is. And so that has a massive application across huge numbers of industries, tri trillion dollars of, uh, of actuator sales every year. So, um, and this actuator is um, leading edge, uh, new, innovative. Um, so really excited about that. Uh, who else am I working with? Working with mental health, you know. So there's a lot of mental health that's you know came to the fore in uh, during COVID in particular, um, and well-being. A lot of money being spent on well-being and, uh, and by employers. Um, I'm working with a company called Paranemo, who is um, uh, developed a platform, a two-sided platform, which works with employers to provide. Uh, support to their uh, employees, but measurable support and measurable um, performance. Um, so they can understand their return on investment, um, but also provide support to their employees that need it, um, uh, you know, a, an instant point of contact. 
So, um, so that's really exciting. Another company um, which I know we're both involved in, so Deep Bridge and myself, I'm actually invested in it as well, is a company called Floretic, um, which is doing some amazing work um, in the uh, sort of uni uh, UTI. Uh, um, and so... Um, Diagnosis of bacterial infection. Yeah, that's it. it. That's it. exactly yeah. it. So at the moment, if you go to your GP, you've got a uh, UTI infection or another type of infection. It, you know, you take a sample. Um, GP sends it off to their local lab. They've got to culture it. It can take forty-eight hours or longer to get the results. Um, by which point, they've the patient's left the surgery, probably been given a, an antibiotic, which isn't correct, um, which again has got another issue around um, we're running out of antibiotics and uh, we're misusing them um, and so it's causing a big problem. But they've developed a system where um, it can identify uh, the bacteria, etc. within 15 minutes. So you're going from 48 hours plus to 15 minutes. So they've not even left the surgery um, before the results come back and they're given the right antibiotic. Uh, because I think it's about 50% of people with a UTI will leave the surgery and will be back in the surgery, either back in the surgery or in hospital, because it's um, because it's quite serious. And so, and this has application across all different types, not just not just urine, but blood and and other types of tests, etc. But 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 you know, they're uh, you know, it's a real you know, it's a type of company I really love because it has a massive social impact, mm. um, and it's almost a bit of a no-brainer, really. So. It, you know, the, the, the proposal is the cartridge, et cetera, will be the same cost as the current lab test. So, you know, why wouldn't you do it? Mm. Um, so it's an attractive market, huge, huge opportunity, and it does a lot of social good. And so, you know, the, that's the type of company I love working with. Yeah, no, thanks. Got three great examples of the, the breadth and mm. the depth, quite frankly, of the, the technology. People talk about deep tech a lot, and um, <clears throat> certainly uh, those are great examples of, uh, of deep tech, I think. So um, moving away from uh, the, the ecosystem and, and back to um, Ben Cooper as a person, as a, mm. as a man, as a human, um, <laughs> yeah. I hope you are, uh, not so <laughs> reptile. That's my chat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are your kind of personal interests uh, away from work in, the, in this glorious Southwest that we live in? Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, what do I like doing? So um, love doing stuff with the kids. Uh, uh, my daughter plays football. So I'm, I'm a real big fan of football. I'm, well, I'm a big fan of football. I'm support Bristol City, so I don't think the two things. <laughs> uh, but also my eldest is a big Liverpool fan, so I'm quite excited about the moment. Obviously, we just missed out on the Premier League title, but you no, know, we've got Champions League next week. So um you know, i'm really excited about that so like that like like rugby like cricket so i i love i love sport uh i'm watching i'm watching sport i still play a bit of football mm. do some tennis and things like that so you know quite active from that perspective and spending some time down the wave getting into your uh near well brain. that's where i was going to go so yeah one of the other great things is uh in bristol is that we've got the wave which is uh an, you know an inland surfing lake um which is just amazing and it's been open i think probably two or three years now obviously covid was a bit of a, a bit of a blow for them but um but yeah it's up and running again and it's uh you know it's good fun um so i'm a, you know bad <laughs> bad at surfing but enjoy it and uh, want to get better at it and so i can feel confident going into the sea and uh, and, and surfing from there so so, yeah. so that's yeah things like that uh, i love being outdoors um and uh yeah sports and things like that that's, ge that's generally what i fill my time with Fantastic. And just to finish off with, it's a question we ask to all the guests um, on the, the Deep Bridge podcast, is mm. the, the Deep Bridge dinner party. So sure. if, you could, if you could invite any three people to join you for dinner, uh, dead or alive, and excluding friends okay. and family, just to not... I take, it I take it they'd be alive while they were there. <laughs> up to you, I suppose. <laughs> well, no, they did come up okay. Depends how much you like yeah. them. <laughs> so who who would they be and and why? Yeah, it's it's an interesting, and I'm glad you gave me you, you gave me a heads of this one in advance because it's quite an interesting it's quite an interesting one. I gave it some thought, and I thought, you know what, you know, I'm a Bristol Bristol born and bred. Uh, spent a couple of years away at Southampton at University, and then um, you know came back, you know, and and I spent most of my life, or pretty much all my life in in Bristol. So I thought I'd give it a bit of a Bristol focus. So I think my three people, the first would be Stephen Merchant um the okay. comedian um probably best known for 
uh, working with Ricky Gervais and stuff on the on, uh, on the office, but more yeah. recently his Outlaws program, which is based in Bristol, mm -hmm. um, comedy series, uh, which, which is excellent. But he's just such a funny man, and uh, yeah. he is such uh, you know an interesting character. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, my second guest um, would be Banksy. So Banksy, the artist or gorilla artist, I think he probably might, might call himself. But does um, Banksy exist? He, well, does he exist? And that's another good question. So, so my, my yeah. So, a I might find out who he is, mm -hmm. um, or maybe he's more than one person. I don't know. And I think that's the whole that that that's the intriguing aspect of it. Not only is the art timely, brilliant, um, on point, um, has sent a great message, um, and you know, it, but but it'd just be great to meet if it is one person, a man, a woman, a group of people. I don't know, but. Mm -hmm be great to find out and i think by inviting them to my party i might get to the bottom of that yeah, yeah. um and finally is uh, was a re you know what i want to do is 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 also link into our innovation and um uh you know the bristol being uh, uh you know innovative point certainly in history and, and the last one and, and someone who probably doesn't anyone doesn't probably know and and, and is, a, is a is a woman called sarah guppy mm -hmm. and she was born in 1770 not in not in Bristol, but in Birmingham. But she moved. She married a chap, um, Samuel Guppy, uh, who was based in Bristol, was a merchant in Bristol. And uh, but she was an inventor, and she was um, had has got about ten or so patents. Mm. She lodged one of which is a early bridge design, which was in the running for the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which okay. um, which is really interesting. And she worked with Isambard Kingdom Brunel on on the Clifton Suspension Bridge, mm. and in fact, he also painted a portrait of her. Wow. Um, but one of the other, but but from Bridges, she also invented probably the first teas made, which uh, which is <laughs> which is quite funny. Which also boiled eggs at the same wow. time and kept and kept me so warm. So you know, yeah. uh, I just wanted to kind of find out more about her and where her yeah. ideas came from because yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. obviously being in the world that I and you guys uh, live in, you know, we're we're looking at new ideas and innovation and things like that all the time and. Um, you know, I just thought she'd be a really fascinating character to, to yeah. meet, um, mainly because obviously even back then, you know, women being inventors, et cetera, was just probably not, well, definitely wasn't the norm. And it'd be no. great to see what type of character she was. She obviously must have been a bit of a force of nature. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, and she, you know, had six kids and she was really, really social, oh, philanthropist and all these types of things. So it'd be, I think she'd just be a really, really interesting character to me. Yeah, it's those kind of people where creativity meets intelligence, meets experience and, and that kind of heady fusion. And that's, I suppose yeah. that's where innovation is ultimately. Yeah. So brilliant. So uh, thank you very much for your, your time this morning and giving nice. um, everybody a, an insight into not only yourself, but the, the Southwest and, and all the different things that are going on with mm. angels, the, the thriving entrepreneurial scene uh, and the, the growing cluster that is the Southwest um, through Tech Southwest. That was really insightful. So thank you so much. Um, oh, you're, you're very welcome. And thanks for, uh, thanks for inviting me along. I hope, uh, I hope it wasn't. I hope it was, hope it was interesting enough. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. I, I found it fascinating. Uh, so to all our audience, thank you for joining us. Um, if you've got any topics that you'd like us to cover in future Deep Bridge Discovery podcasts, then please email us at discovery at deepbridgecapital.com or equally reach out to anybody you know from, from Deep Bridge. But thank you very much for listening. And until the next time. This podcast was brought to you by Deep Bridge Capital LLP. Deep Bridge is authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Please note that investments discussed are both illiquid and high risk and won't be suitable for all investors and should be considered as part of a diversified portfolio. The content of this podcast should not be construed as financial or taxation advice. We recommend investors seek appropriate professional financial advice. Any views expressed may no longer be current and may have already been acted upon.